Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. The Lord is saying today, my child, stop fighting the losing battle in the flesh of your own strength, of your own stress, of your own worry, of your own intellect. For have I not said that my ways are higher than your ways, and that it is not by your might or by your power, but it is by the power of my spirit. Yes, it is time to let go and let me, my child, for your battle belongs to me. For there is a great unseen world that is not seen in the naked eye, my child, but there is a spiritual battle going on in the heavenly realm. That's right, a realm as tangible as the ground that you stand upon. A great battle is being waged, my child. It is a battle for souls, and the enemy hopes you ignore it so that you will not arise to the challenge. A defeated Satan and his minions seek to claim as many women and men as possible, knowing that their fate is unreconcilable, that you can see this battle being raged even in the family today like never before. Yes, my child, the devil knows the importance of a united family with a united front. He knows that when my plan for the family order is in right position and in right order, and that each member walks in the authority that I have given them over the enemy, in my order and in my rank, he becomes what he is, a defeated foe. For he only wishes to do everything to kill, steal, and to destroy within your family. So you must understand the enemy is attacking the family unit like never before. And unless each family wakens to this truth, he will use your apathy to slowly help each family enter into that slumber so that he can subtly destroy each individual family member until all future generations never follow my ways. A revived home consists of individuals who constantly walk in my light and where my blood cleanses them from all sin. Yes, daily cleansing, daily emptying, daily filling, daily renewal and redemption through my word is the only way to abide in the true vine. And I am the vine and you are the branches. There is an unseen battle going on today in your local schools, in your local workplace, in your local church, and of course, even in your government. My child Satan focuses all his effort in stopping the church's effectiveness in prayer, evangelism, healing and deliverance. But revival is the answer, my child. But a church that is in slumber is not even aware of the need of that revival and becomes defenseless, defenseless to the attacks of the enemy. See, if Satan first introduced sin into the family, then and it is in the home that will continue to focus his attack, my child. So it is in the home that revival first needs to come. Yes, revival is desperately needed also in my church, in your country and across the globe. But a revived church with an unrevived home would not hit the mark of the enemy's assault against my creation. I did not call you to the playground, but rather I called you to the battleground of prayer. When you as an individual choose to engage in this battle, you follow me, your great commander in chief. Yes, I am the captain of the army of the Lord. I am a mighty warrior. I am the Lord of hosts. I will always am ready and willing and able to fight, to fight and win and to battle and to conquer and to vanquish, to triumph over 
even the fiercest of foes. Remember, when you are in the midst of battle, know that I am with you, the man of war, breaking through every barrier before you. When you are fighting on my side, you can be inspired to engage with confidence and boldness, with courage and strength, knowing that I fight your battles for you. Yes, you need to remember that you fight these battles first and foremost on your knees, my child, in prayer. The prayers of my people are the secret weapon of this war. That's right, my toughest warriors are homebound and aged in body, my child, yet mighty in the weapon that brings victory through prayer. Therefore, the next generation must arise to the challenge and pick up the sword of the Spirit to battle against the enemy. Yes, more now than ever, those that are in this battle need prayer support to fight this battle. For those who are and have been on the front line of my missions work, of my street preaching, of deliverance ministry and healing and so forth are indebted to those intercessors that tirelessly wage the good fight of warfare. You battle is not in the flesh, my child, but of the spirit against all the hordes of hell, my child. For have I not said, for you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wicked wickedness in the heavenly places. When you position yourself, my child, and pray with the help of my spirit, you will always send hemorrhaging to the realms of darkness and always spoil every diabolical plan. I delight in you, my child, and have you covered in my protection today. So yield yourself fully to me today. And as you do this, remember this battle is mine. I am your way maker. I am your defender. I am your healer. I am your vindicator. I am your provider. And I will make a way for you today, my child. I am your coming, conquering king. I am a general of armies. I am the man of war. I am the lion of Judah. And I will defeat all all the enemies with my breath. Therefore, while you wait for me to return, my child, remember I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy. So walk in your given authority that was purchased at the cross and put on your full armor that I have provided for you today. In me, you will have victory. Shalom. Is the Lord precious saints. The Bible says, according to Ephesians 6 verse 13, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Hallelujah. So a few of us are familiar with the battle armor from Paul's day. That's right. He was chained to a Roman soldier at that particular time. And as he was chained there and writing one of his letters, the revelation came of the spiritual battle that we are under at this time. So some of it may resemble what soldiers in battle use today, but most of it is now seen only in movies and probably museums. So Paul uses the language of combat in his day because the tension between good and evil is real warfare, saints of God. Some people today call it spiritual warfare, and that's exactly what it is. Evil is real and unavoidable in our fallen world because here we experience the effects of sin and separation from God. So the redemption in Christ are not immune to the impact of evil and all who are disciples of Jesus need the protection of spiritual army. That's right, because as soon as we become born again, we are enlisted into the army of God. And in the army of God, just like in the natural army, there are casualties of war. And there are many casualties of war also within God's army that need healing and restoration so they can get back out there and fight.
fight the good fight of faith. So it's also important to recognize that full armor is needed. In other words, all parts of our body need the protection that only full spiritual armor can provide. So this armor is made up of the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the firm footwear of the gospel of peace, ready to help us stand our ground in every situation. We also need the shield of faith to fire off the fiery darts of the enemy, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So such armor is truly invincible, for it is equipment we receive from Christ himself. So are you dressed in God's armor today? And if you are, then in God's strength, you will be faithful and secure in warfare against the evil one that could be against you today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, you are the source of our protection and our strength. Grant us fitting armor so that we can stand firm in times when evil surrounds us. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you today as we put on the full armor of God to to guard our lives against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations we battle. We put the gospel of peace on our feet that we're ready to take your light wherever you send us today. We choose to walk in the peace and freedom of your spirit and not to be overcome with fear and anxious thoughts. We take up your shield of faith that will extinguish all the darts and threats hurdled our way by the enemy. We believe in your power to protect us and choose to trust in you. We put on the helmet of salvation, which covers our minds and thoughts, reminding us that we are children of the day, forgiven, set free, saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the very Word of God, the one offensive weapon given to us for battle, which has the power to demolish strongholds and be alive, it's active and sharper than any double-edged sword. We ask for your help in remembering to put on your full armor each day, for you give us all that we need to stand firm in this world. Forgive us, God, for the times that we have been unprepared, too busy to care, or trying to fight and wrestle within our own strength or within our own logic or stressing about the days and the cares that come upon us without casting them to you. Thank you that we never fight alone for you are constantly at work on our behalf, Lord, shielding, protecting, strengthening, exposing deeds of darkness, bringing to light what needs to be known, covering us from the cruel attacks that we face even when we're unaware. In the powerful name of our Lord Jesus, we thank you, the Holy Spirit, that you will come and guide us, shield us, and strengthen us, even when we don't know what to pray, that you will pray on our behalf. Lord, I pray a blessing to come upon your people. Surround them with a hedge of protection. Lord, as your hedge of angels to surround them today, send forth each person into the new day with your grace, with your strength, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrowpath Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance today, you may want to follow us on, 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 um, on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. And also, don't forget, we've got the up-and-coming three-day fasting, which is on the 19th, 20th, and 21st. So get in for that because it's about us 
going to another level. Then on the Monday, uh, we start the 21 day of prayer and uh, you know, when we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna switch on the TV. We're gonna come away from all the electronics, all the distractions of this world, and just get close to God. And most importantly, it's about bringing revival in your home. So you can find all the details for that uh, on the different places that I've mentioned over these course of these weeks. Uh, but be blessed. So from my family to yours, we love you. We're praying for you. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.